Hello and welcome to my video. This might be pretty obvious given these really weird placements, but what you're looking at right now is my old tier list from over a year ago. Today's solo character tier list will change quite a bit from this as we got 4 character reworks and quite a few quality of life changes to other characters that changed the meta a lot. So I thought it would be cool to look at this and see how much it changes in about a year worth of updates. But we are going to make this new list just a little bit different. On my previous list, I didn't even try to let my own personal opinions out of it, I've simply placed characters that I disliked to the bottom of the list. I would be lying if I said this tier list will not have my opinions, it will, but I will try to be as objective as I can in this one and place them according to the two main ways to play this game solo, boss rushing and mega basin. So how good that character is to kill bosses as efficiently as possible and how good that character is when you're mega basing or how efficient that character is when gathering resources or making unique farms. And I won't even talk about beginner friendly traits, simply because it's beyond the point. With the risk of stating the obvious, beginner players are not able to use a character to its full potential. Therefore, a beginner-friendly character list would be its own thing. The point is to list characters from most to least useful. So in S tier we have the characters that are rightfully called OP. In A tier we have characters that are quite powerful for their own reasons, but in its own balanced way. B will stand for balanced, as the characters in this tier are really good in their current states. C tier for characters that are not exactly bad, but could use some additions and buffs. And D as the final tier of this list for characters that are desperately in need of changes. And Wes. So a pretty long intro, but let's get right to the character that changed the meta entirely by himself, Maxwell. Maxwell is the best character in the game right now, so his place is on top of the S tier. Maxwell can do it all, from quickly harvesting and gathering resources to quickly destroying bosses with his new duelists and his ability to cast the Shadow Prison to even cheese some bosses. In comparison to Wolfgang in boss fights, Maxwell with few weaver's gear to boost his minions is as strong and often stronger than Wolfgang, if you're using the right strategies. Combine that with the power of summoning minions to make them mine, chop and collect stuff for you at a really low cost, it just makes Maxwell an insanely powerful character on both killing bosses and mega basin. On my last tier list I avoided talking about swapping characters to judge them as their own but Maxwell can use Wicker Bottom's books and simply have all the benefits and perks she provides, effectively being two characters in one. So Maxwell can also use books to grow resources and harvest them with the minions, full moons at will, stopping or starting rain, bees for even more damage and so on. So Maxwell is, without a doubt, S tier. And since we talked about Wicker Bottom, let's place her already at A tier. On her rework they added a lot more books and the bookcase that is the best thing they could have added. The bookcase is simply amazing as it completely shifted Wicker from a very expensive character to a pretty cheap and long term one as you only need a set number of each book and simply leave them on the bookcase so they slowly gain their durability back. She can control the rain, the moon, instantly grow crops, grass, twigs, trees and even summon fish having several ways to farm several different resources. The ability to control the moon cycle, the ability to stop rains in spring and to make it rain during summer to stop wildfires is incredibly convenient late game when you're mega basing. And she even has a few features to kill bosses like making it rain to use the morning star for extra damage, the tentacle cheese against bee queen and let's not forget she can summon several grumble bees that are really good against multiple bosses. So Wicker Bottom is a really strong character overall and A tier is deserved. Last tier list I placed Wigfried in S tier, now I will demote her all the way down to B tier. Abilities to kill bosses fast is super valuable in this game. 
Even if you're just a mega base enjoyer, several items and structures are still locked behind bosses, and that's why combat abilities with no significant downsides is so valuable. And that's why Wigfrid is so good. No downsides as the meat-only diet barely proves itself a challenge, and she has a very cheap playstyle as she can easily restore sanity and health by fighting, which greatly reduces the need of food for it. And she has a number of songs that can give you a lot of benefits that are very useful in the right scenarios. But the rise of Maxwell to one of the best boss killing characters definitely makes the other characters seem weaker, as the tier list is basically comparing characters to each other, and Wigfrid is only good at killing things, with no late game advantages. So Wigfrid is a really good character, but she's not as good as others to kill bosses, and the lack of late game perks is definitely her biggest downside, so B tier seems fair. Wendy is B tier. I know, I know, you love Wendy and she's S tier in your heart, but the truth is, Abigail is not useful everywhere. Wendy and Abigail are really good at killing certain bosses, but if the boss has an AoE, Abigail gets destroyed and then Wendy is left dealing West damage. I intentionally didn't mention Beefalo's on my last tier list because if you mentioned Beefalo for one character, you gotta mention for all others too. But I will mention them in this list, as Beefalos are secretly S tier. Beefalos are S tier because they are able to counter characters' downsides. If your character has problems with healing, like Wormwood, the Beefalo will tank for you. If you need speed, the Beefalo will make you fast. Deal less damage, Beefalos will deal damage for you. When this damage penalty does not transfer to Beefalo, so that's a really important synergy they have. When Abigail dies, your beefalo will be there to save you from the low damage. Besides that, Abigail is excellent on farming resources from enemy hordes like spiders and shadows blue monkeys, and it's a permanent protection against the late game hound waves, so she has a little bit of late game potential on farming some supplies, but not that significant to be that impactful. So a pretty good and balanced character overall, so B tier it is. I'm gonna give Warmood C tier today, but really close from falling to D tier. It is still a shame that Warmood is the best at farming when he's the one character that benefits the least from it, as you don't even need farming at all to fuel your hunger and he cannot heal from crops or crockpot dishes. So while having a farmer is extremely useful in co-op, it's not that great solo. You can manually start the blooming process, which gives you that sweet speed buff, which is very helpful all around, including at killing bosses. And his special armor, the Bramble Husk, is a lot cheaper now, which not only gives you defense, but it also deals damage to enemies attacking you. Which is really handy in fights where you rely on tanking a little bit. And since you have speed boost from Blooming, armor becomes a little bit more efficient to use, as you no longer require to use a Magilumin Essence for boss fights. But going back to the healing disadvantage, there are ways to counter it, but most of them end up being time consuming, like gathering all the resources for healing solves or sleeping. By the way, I hate sleeping in this game. You're just staring at the screen looking at your character doing nothing! Fun and interactive, right? And the effective healing methods end up being expensive, like the bat bats. But all you gotta do is not get hit ever. Easy, right? So it kinda has a decent synergy with beefalos, as they will mitigate the damage for most of the time. But it comes with the cost of DPS, and it makes blooming for speed boost obsolete. So all of that leaves Wormwood as a pretty good character to swap to for crops, giants for decoration and ingredients for warless dishes. And if you're looking for a different playstyle and a challenge, Wormwood might be the perfect choice for you. So for those reasons, Wormwood is at the bottom of C tier. But before we move on, there's an idea to make Wormwood better. Warmwood is from the moon, so it would be cool if there was special interactions between the moon creatures and the lunacy mechanic for Warmwood. We literally just got the deadly bright shades added to the game, a plant, and Warmwood has zero interactions with it. 
So, there is room lore-wise to make Wormwood better by interacting with this type of contents, especially now that this particular content is being developed further. But for now, we wait patiently. Willow is still in D tier. I'm very surprised that there's a few characters that simply did not receive any updates whatsoever, and Willow is one of them. Her only real special perk is Bernie, which can be useful if you want to passively farm Nightmare Fuel and it can occasionally tank something for you. Once again, I think they should just unlimit the amount of Bernies you can have active at the same time, so you could at least use it to fight some bosses properly. Would also be cool to have a perk that allows the use of fire to fight without burning the loot, because if you don't know, if the enemy is on fire when it dies, the loot becomes ashes. Even if the loot is not flammable, it still becomes ashes. And that's it. Sadly, just a really underwhelming character at the moment, for such an iconic one. Back on Astier, we have Wanda added, as you can expect. Wanda can get the best weapon in the game within 5 or 6 days, if you know what you're doing. A weapon that can deal 142 damage per hit, at distance, that doesn't break and just needs Nightmare Fuel to be recharged. She can restore her health or age with Ageless Watches that recharges after 2 minutes and don't ever break, which is honestly the most underrated part of her kit as getting an item that will heal you forever is extremely useful. And towards the late game she can set one-click teleports anywhere she wants on the map, even in the caves. Why do you even need speed boost when you can teleport anywhere with one click? And one might say she's a risky character to play as you need to stay at low health to get that damage boost on the alarming clock. But you can play Wanda very safely by just staying between the age of 35 and 40 and you only lose the extra damage, you can use every other perk she has without being at risk that way. So don't be afraid of this character thinking that you have to be super skilled to play as her. She's not S tier just because of the damage, she's an amazing character even without it. I can finally place one of my all time favorite characters Wurt in A tier. Word starts with nothing and you have to slowly work towards having a Merm King and an army. Once you get a decent amount of those Merm Guards in your ward, you are set to farm resources and bosses easily with them. Farming Dragonfly and Bee Queen every 20 days and the seasonal bosses is a piece of cake with a small Merm army. On my last tier list I placed her on B tier, but ever since she had a ton of quality of life changes before the Merm King would digest food fast. It was only worth feeding it when you were about to fight bosses with the guards. Now, if you fully feed it, you can forget about it for 8 days. So it is useful now to feed him to have her higher stats, as it's such low cost with kelp and stone fruit growing all year long. You can now feed multiple Merms with one piece of food, which is not only faster than before, but also cheaper. And reeds are a super important resource for her and you can now get renewable plantable reeds from the monkey island. And you can turn into Wonky to exchange trinkets with Big King for gold, which she couldn't obtain easily before without character swapping. And those are just some of the big changes. Once you are able to obtain the ice brim and the sunfish, you won't ever need a thermal stone or an umbrella ever again and needless to say how cozy it is to mega base under those conditions. I've mega based as words for over a thousand days and made a complete guide for the character if you want to check it out. So for me words definitely deserves the A tier spot, as a mid to late game character that has good perks for defeating bosses and a lot of good reasons to mega base as her. Worley is once again in B tier. So repeating my points from the previous video, Warly is an excellent character, his downside is countered easily if you are an experienced player, and his unique dishes and seasons are extremely useful and powerful. However, it takes a long time to gather the specific items for those dishes, and he does not have any perks related to that. You can say he's like words, where you start with nothing and have to work towards getting everything that makes him powerful, 
and that can give you a nice feeling of accomplishment. But the problem is, Wurtz gets to build a next amount of merm houses and use those forever, while Warley has to keep working on getting resources for dishes forever, since its benefits are temporary. So the reason for me to place Warley in B tier instead of A is his lack of gathering perks to make his late game less grindy and the early game a little faster. Something like a higher chance of getting vote good horns or a chance of getting double glowberries would be highly appreciate to solve that issue. But for now his best use is still is as a character to be swapped to, to make the dishes and to swap back to the character you like. With that in mind, B tier is a fair placement. And a lot of people will hate me for this, I know, but WX is B tier. <gasps> So here are my opinions. Being honest, WX's rework was my least favorite of all of them. I like the concept where you can customize your WX how you want and enjoy the perks that matters to you. But since the beginning, I hate the small amount of slots you have to do that. And I dislike that all their old abilities were completely scattered in 15 different circuits when you can only use one or two of them at the same time. So old WX had, all at the same time, a lot of extra health, sanity and hunger after consuming gears. And when overcharged, they also had super speed, light and protection against cold. Now you have to pick one or two abilities and forget about the rest. The TLDR is, the only time when you want to give up the speed circuits is for convenience, like night vision or the two thermal circuits on the season where you can use them. That basically makes all other 10 circuits never really worth to use. Losing durability on the circuits also demotivates the player from trying out different configurations, which is honestly unfair if you compare to Wanda and her entire kit of unbreakable watches. So, I don't think WX is all that bad, speed boost is extremely helpful in boss fights and on getting to those fights, and the convenience perks can be nice if you're just building stuff in your base and don't wanna bother with light sources or thermal stones, as that saves you a lot of time when you're just decorating. And that's about it. As I stated before, B tier is for the balanced characters, but I honestly think WX is too balanced. I would like to have more slots and having the circuits to be simply capped, so you wouldn't use like 8 speed circuits, but it's very unlikely that they will ever change WX, as it was one of the most successful reworks in the eyes of the community, so I guess I'm just a hater. In D tier we have Woody. Woody, just like Willow, is really underwhelming at the moment, the Muse is terrible to fight with. The beaver is not even as good as Berger to get her wood, which every other character can use. And the goose is only useful for exploration, which becomes obsolete once you've found everything you needed to find, which doesn't take long at all. This is not a co-op tier list, but playing as Woody in a server with a weaker bottom making every night a full moon makes it actually incredibly painful to play as Woody. I honestly don't even have an idea on what they can do to make the character better. I guess some major buffs or a complete rework, more variety on transformations or maybe ways to upgrade the current ones as you progress, but right now it is just pain. And now we have Wolfgang in A tier. Wolfgang is the best when it comes to Q bosses, at least if you're killing them in non cheesy ways. Mightiness is extremely easy to rise and to maintain, so you not only take advantage of double damage at all times, but you also can use a piggy backpack, which is only 2 slots less from a Krampus sack, and marble suits for fights where you need to tank, both without the speed penalty. He can chop, mine, and roll faster, which is all helpful, and carrying statues faster is super valuable in boss runs. His simplicity makes an all bosses run as him incredibly efficient, but that's about it. He doesn't really have any late game advantages unless you consider re-killing bosses as a late game advantage. So he definitely deserves A tier for being the best boss rushing character in the game, but doesn't quite get to be S tier because of no late game perks. Weber is a B tier character. 
Weber has a pretty minor downside, which is being hated by other creatures, which is annoying but easily manageable. Besides that, the ability to quickly gather up a bunch of spiders is really good against a lot of the bosses. And it kinda has the same downside as Wendy, that once the boss has an AoE, the spiders die too quickly, and that's about it. It's a pretty fun character to play overall, but does not really have late game advantages. So low on B tier. Wilson is now at B tier. Wilson got a skill tree and his new useful abilities can be summarized into transforming certain resources into other resources, which is really valuable in Mega Base words, where you end up accumulating some resources and lacking on others. The torch skill tree is pretty meh. And besides getting all the transmutation skills, I like to throw some points into getting beard insulation and the sweet beard food storage, which is just extra inventory slots for food, nothing too special. He also has two perks, one for shadow and one for lights, that contains hidden perks. The shadow gives him 10% defense against shadow creatures and 10% damage against lunar creatures, and the lunar one is the other way around but you only get to choose one of those perks. So Wilson is a pretty good character to swap to in Mega Base words for the transmutation skills and even though it is minor, picking between the two final skills can be pretty nice depending on which bosses you are planning on fighting. So I think Wilson gets to be another bottom B tier character. Wartox is still in B tier. Wartox got a new ability, the Word Hop, where you can click on the map and teleport to that location costing souls depending on the distance. And that sounds OP. Even I called it OP when it was added to the game, but it's not really. It is a really good ability, even considering the time you take to replenish your souls, but the other abilities are still not that great. What I dislike most about the character is the food downside especially when it comes to controlling your sanity, as he gets half hunger, sanity and health from food. So, for example, trying to lower your sanity with green caps in a celestial champion fight will cost you twice as many caps, and if you're trying to restore your sanity against few weavers, same problem with different food. Healing is extremely easy to obtain anyway, so his healing perk is not that advantageous solo, as it is also technically limited to 20. You can bypass that with bees, but that adds a much grindier step than just making some easy healing food. So let's look at Wartox this way. He gets to teleport for iframes, he gets to teleport around the map, he gets free healing. Why is he bad? That sounds awesome and powerful. Well, I think he has two problems. Number one is, Wartox has no gathering abilities at all, so he cannot be considered a mega base type of character. So Wartox falls into the same category as other boss killing characters, more specifically characters with no late game advantages. And the difference is that Wartox has real disadvantages that you have to deal with at all times, unlike Wolfgang and Wigfried that are basically disadvantage free. And when comparing those characters, I personally don't see why I would ever pick Wartox to kill all bosses, as I can do the same more efficiently with other characters that not only have extra damage or are tankier, but also have no downsides, and teleporting is not that big of an advantage to justify the pick. So he's not bad, but ends up being not great either, another low B tier character. Winona is C tier. I was very surprised that Winona didn't get any updates. Catapults are really powerful, but they cost a lot of resources, and you spend a lot of time to set them up. And that's about it for the character. You can craft stuff really fast, so really 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 late game when you just harvested 500 trees with Berger. It can be nice to craft boards fast with that ability, but that is as useful as it gets. I wouldn't call Winona bad at all, but if you pick this character you're setting yourself to grind a lot, which not everyone is up to. It would be nice if she had more machines and could do more than just killing enemies in a set location with them. But maybe she will receive some new stuff in the future. Now let's finally talk about Walter. 
Walter once again at the bottom, so let's go over it again. His slingshot is plain bad as it attacks twice as slow as you would with a normal weapon. The marble round deals 51 damage, which means even in a scenario where you can stand still and attack, which is rarely the case, it means you're dealing less damage than an axe. Yep, less damage than a tool, not even a weapon. Portable tent is not special as any character can carry a prototyped tent and you can just not place it down and boom, the normal tent is also portable. Crazy, right? Singing at a campfire or standing by a tree for sanity is also worthless as there are lots of more efficient methods to restore it, especially when they are not standstill looking at the screen methods. That I mentioned before in this video, it is something I really dislike. And losing sanity on hits and the bee allergy are extremely annoying mechanics. You can mitigate the sanity loss with Walter's unique hat, but it's still a problem because the helmet slot is too precious to give up. And the bee allergy just means when you have to defeat Bee Queen, you are up for a fight that lasts half an hour. Trust me, I had that fight and it's not fun to fight Bee Queen for 30 minutes. So Walter doesn't have any resource gathering abilities and he also can't kill bosses better, faster or more efficiently than anyone else. And that's why Walter is bad. However, to be fair, you can cheese some bosses if you set them in a way they can't cross water to get to you, and extra inventory slots from Wobi can be pretty handy. No one can say no to extra permanent Chester, even if the monkeys can steal from it. And also being fair to its sanity loss on hits, a tamed beefalo will counter that downside, for the most part. But I wouldn't call it a synergy as it simply makes the character tolerable to play. But don't get me wrong, it's not like I hate Walter, I want Walter to be good as much as you do. I think the best solution to fix Walter is heavily buffing this slingshot. Faster attack rate would already be a big game changer. And I would also like to see a rebalance of all the slingshot ammo. As there is a need to farm for it, you should be rewarded for your grind with damage, at least. But wouldn't a faster slingshot and more damage be OP? Maybe it would be, if we already didn't have a character that can attack things at a distance and deals 142 damage per hit. The thing is, a character with no late game perks needs to be at least decent at killing bosses without the need of heavily cheesing them. But right now he's not that much better than Wes, that is just behind Walter on the list, but for intentional reasons, at least. And that's it for this video. I gave this list a lot more thought than the other one. And I was surprised to have placed most characters in B tier since in my last list I placed most of them in D tier. Classifying the B tier as balanced characters was in hindsight and not planned, which was an unexpected but happy result. With most characters on B tier or above, I would say characters in this game are pretty balanced and diverse, which is the goal of having so many different characters. It has been hinted that all characters are gonna be choosing between the light and the dark side late game, just like Wilson with his skill tree, so despite our play not announcing any more character reworks, we might still see a lot more changes to characters soon in form of skill trees. That's just my guess, don't quote me on it. If you watched the video this far, I appreciate you. If you like the contents, don't forget to subscribe, like the video and leave a comment with your opinions. And as always, thank you for watching.